trying to teach you something, you see. And so, and so that means now that there is something that has overwhelmed me, spiritually speaking. I'm not talking about loss of job. I'm not talking about loss of something tangible. I'm talking about something that has caused me to get out of God's will and purpose for my life. Oh, yeah. Brother, he didn't say sinner. Brother. So that's that's church folk. That's people like you and I who were worshiping today. And that is a, it is a possibility, believe it or not, that we can be overtaken. Now he says, if you if you're overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual. This message now. We're still talking about this drive and compassion. Amen. You which are spiritual, restore such a one. In that verse, there is a responsibility that is placed on you and me. As a Christian, we have that responsibility. Well, if that's a too strong a word for you, let me just say it is our duty as a believer and as a Christian to go to help a brother who is overwhelmed in the spiritual dilemma. Brother, if you're caught up in adultery, it's my responsibility as, as, a, as a Christian to, to, to help you can't really change you because you have to make up your mind that that's what you want to do differently, right? But it's my responsibility to go to you with you. Now, I'm not supposed to go with you with a whipping stick. And that's where most Christians right there have got lost. Because we are so judgmental about our perfected praise or the lack of it until we don't have that meekness of restoration. Yeah. See, see, the objective is, is to restore the brother. Yeah. Not, not to whip him, not to push him away, but to bring him back. And, 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 and to bring him back means to put him back. Now, restore means that he's got to be put back to a position where he wants or she wants was. Yeah. See, you can't restore something that has not been, has not left its original place. You which are restored. Oh, he says, no, watch this, restore such a one. Now, how do we do it? We do it in the spirit of meekness. That's that compassion we're talking about in Sunday school. You got to be able to be understanding as to what's going on with me. I'm a Christian just like you, but I got caught up in some stuff. Now, somebody don't be listening real good here because I don't believe God put this in my spirit for nothing. And, and see, it doesn't matter how much you put your worship on display on Sundays. And how you look before the crowd in the backyard, in the back alley, in the darkness of the night when there's stuff that is overtaking you, there's a smart God who has the ability to understand knows what takes place in the dark. Why you come to preach the choir? I'm going to turn the corner. I don't know what you're talking about. I made a comment about two or three Sundays ago. And I don't really understand. I didn't understand then why I made it. But when I made it, I felt something in my preaching. Y'all might remember this. I said that whatever you do in the dark will come to the light. Now you might sit on it. For a long time. But eventually it will be exposed. Help me somebody. I'm really trying to help you here. See? And, and, and so and so and so when, when God gets ready to pull the cover off of it, it doesn't matter what your status is or who you are, you're going to be exposed. Amen. And, 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 and you might want to hide it. You might want to try to do something about it. And you can't. But that's, that's, that's not the issue. It's already done now. The thing is, what do we do forward? What do we do about it? How do we handle it? Since God is so smart, and, and verse 7 really, really sums it up. In other words, God is not mocked. Can I explain that? what that means? It means that he's not, you can't, you can't outsmart him. He's not outwitted. 
He, he's not so ignorant that, that the brightest and the sharpest mind that we know can get around his intellect. He is not marked. You can't fool him. Somebody said, teach me. I didn't write this. It's right here in the Bible. He is not marked. God is not marked. Be not deceived. Don't deceive yourself. You can't outwit him, outsmart him. Amen. And then he goes on to say, not only with he's, he's smart, but he knows everything. So Paul is simply saying, restore such a one. And I want you today, who knows, who knows, you know, in your spirit now, that you have a situation that is overbearing, that you lost, and you flunk that text. Amen. Because the proof is in the pudding. And guess what? The pot is in the oven. And guess what? When the oven, when the pot gets done, it's got to come out. Amen. Help me somebody. I, I challenge you, I challenge you not to look at your cue member. I challenge you to check yourself out. Because the truth of the matter is, there's some stuff in the oven, but it ain't quite ready to come out yet. Clap somebody high fives, it ain't quite ready to come out yet. Can, ladies, can I say this without y'all getting offended? It, this is just a this is just a metaphor, okay? This is just an analogy. You know, and of course it's just real life, you know, because we know that that, that pregnancy is something that, that women get involved with. Amen. That happens, right? Amen. And when the baby gets ready to be delivered, guess what? You can suck back, you can hold on if you want to. That baby's coming out of there. Follow what I'm saying? Because the time is at hand. And so when God gets ready to expose it, you can pull it back all you want to. It's coming out. And so what I want us to do as I get ready to turn this thing is to understand that it's not about trying to hide the situation. It's all about being honest with God and yourself. That's what it's all about. Being honest with Him because He already knows. He knows the situation. And it's our job as the church, I'm talking about believers and brethren, if you allow me, and to extend a hand to that person who has been overburdened by the fault. And try to restore the brother or the sister back in the good grace of God. Amen. One more couple of verses and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to turn. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to move on. And I know y'all probably saying this is boring. But I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person who has a problem. That's what I'm talking to. I'm not talking to you. Amen. Now, hit number three. Put them, excuse me. Hit, kind of like... <laughs> Hit me <laughs> on number three, right quick. Okay, because I want to show you something. Now, now, watch this. Look here. Watch this. For if a man think himself to be something, take your time, read it slow. Read it slow now. If you think yourself to be something, now, when he is nothing, now, the truth of the matter is, you ain't there. But you have convinced yourself that you are. Help me, somebody. Can I say that again? Yeah. Truth of the matter is, you're not there, but you have convinced yourself that you are there. Yeah. Amen. Now, if you think that you're something when you're nothing, yeah. the scripture says that you deceive yourself. Yeah. In other words, it's all about deception. That's what it's all about. Because you can't be honest with yourself. If, if you do, you know that you're not there yet. Huh? Now, if you're overburdened with the problem, if you're overburdened with the sin, if the sin has overtook you, and here you are convincing yourself that you've outgrown it, or you've got around it, when in fact you have not, then you are, you are a product of deception. Therefore, amen, even if I have a desire to restore you, or to help you get back, I can't accomplish the task, because... You have allowed yourself to be deceived. Can I put it this way? Amen. Don't try to shout on top of sin. That's deception. 
Because really, all you're doing is really showing yourself, and, and that's about it. God knows what's going on. Huh? Y'all ain't mad with me, are Well, let me close it out. I really I wish I had time, honestly. Because we need to be taught. We need, we need some teaching. Amen. And, 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 and if you're not careful, you look at verse 5 and you look at verse number number 5. Amen. What it says here says, For every man shall bear his own burdens. And if you look at verse 5, 2 and 5, you can think that they are contradicting each other. Hit me, too. Bear ye one another's burdens. That's the brother. That's us who are believers, Christians. In other words, now that simply suggests to me that I'm supposed to help you in your fault. Now let me teach you something now. I can't bear your burdens with you if I'm not at least the level you are. Huh? If you're here and I'm down here and the burden's on top of, on top of you, you've actually got the load. So I've got to be at least your equal or above to help you to bear. Right? So it tells me that I have a responsibility. Now, this is not a duty here. This is a responsibility. I'm supposed to help you, and you're supposed to help me to bear that thing which has overtook me. Help me, somebody. So therefore, i got to make sure I'm in a position to do that. And then if you look at verse, uh, look at the next one, I believe it was uh, verse 5. It's almost that there's a contradictory there. It says, for every man shall bear his own burdens. Now, what that does is it puts the responsibility back on you. Because if I help you get to where you need to be, help me somebody. Then I got to back off. And then you got to assume responsibility for yourself and you got to bear your own burden. Well, I do feel like preaching. I know I'm jumping around, but I care. I got to say this for two because this is in my spirit, and they say, not, not, and they say, hit me again in verse number one. Amen. Hit me because I, I, I missed something. Now, watch this. It says, uh, in, in, that, in that restoration process, look at it. In the restoration process, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. And it says, now, considering thyself. For a long time, I used to think. That that, that, that that phrase simply meant, amen, that I have to watch myself because there's a possibility that I might find myself in the same situation. And that much is true, but, but the Holy Spirit gave me a different light on this thing last week. Because not only am I responsible to help you get to where you need to be, but I got to consider myself because if I stay there too long, that same burden that you're bearing will also overtake me. So I got to help you and I got to fight off. I wish somebody help me preach it. Help me preach it here. And I got to make sure that I guard myself while I'm trying to restore you because if I'm not careful, amen, I would also find myself being tempted. Have somebody say high five, I got it now. Say it again, so I got it now. I didn't write this, consider yourself. You got to make sure that you watch over you while you're trying to help somebody else. Help me somebody, help me somebody, lest you also be tempted. So if you burn down with adultery, I got to help you get out of it. But now, I can't tarry too long. Because if I stick around too long, the next thing you know, I might get enticed myself. And the next thing I know, not only are you in trouble, but I'm in trouble too. Oh, I feel like preaching here. I feel like I feel like blessing him here. Thank God for wisdom and insight. In other words, just help the brother and back off. You still preaching to me. Can y'all tell I have been with the Lord? <laughs> Can you really tell I have been with the Lord? <laughs> so hit it and back off. Don't stay too long. Lest thou also be tempted. And here's my final point in honesty. You know, you notice know, this preacher got four closing. This is this is my fourth video. I'm closing on this one. I gotta take you back 
I gotta take you back to verse seven right quick. 